All right, so today we're going to do the EPOC training. Um, here's your EPOC over here. This is going to be the replacement for the iStat. This is your blood gas, electrolyte, lactate, and um, ionized calcium all in one cartridge. So per usual, you're going to order your test through your easy vent. You're going to use your DR number as your patient ID. This is the unit right here. There's two power buttons if it's ever turned off. The power button for the host, which is what this top part is called, is right here, that red button. And then the reader power button is right here, the screen button. So if you ever try to connect and it's telling you it can't connect to the reader, um, then that means that this bottom part here is not turned on. So uh, to log into the EPOC, you can use this little stylet here on the side. In the corner here is a little keyboard. If you tap that, you can type in your information. You also have the ability to shift and use these buttons here too if that's easier for you. I'm gonna use the keyboard today. <clears throat> so we don't need a password to log in, but we do need to use um, a user ID. And if you look at the reader here, it tells you your ID is always the technician initials. So we'll go ahead and enter my initials. We're gonna go ahead and hit log in telling you it's connecting to the reader so this is that point where I said if it says it can't connect to the reader then typically this is not powered on so while it's configuring to the reader let's talk about um, our samples your samples are going to be heparinized samples unless they are um, it's an arterial sample so anything venous that you're running on here you're going to put into your green top tube and you're not going to spin it down okay so Test cartridges are kept over here. They're never kept in the refrigerator. Um, they'll always be sitting over here. And then extras should be in backup cubex. All right. So we're going to go ahead and open our cartridge. If I take a look at it on one side, we have a sticker. On the opposite side, it's clear with a little blue arrow, just so you know right here in the lab where the piece of equipment sits. Here are step-by-step -step instructions um, as to how to run samples too. So if you ever get caught up, you can refer to this as well. So when you take it out of the plastic, try not to touch this little microchip here. Um, our fingers are oily and we don't want to damage that. There's also a little fluid pack inside. If we're rough with these, we can puncture it and then it'll render the card no good. So. We're going to go ahead and we're going to keep the clear side up because that's where we're going to introduce our sample. I'm going to do a nice swift push in. If you have a good insertion, you'll have it uh, see the lot number and it'll start calibrating. If you're too slow sometimes or you're too fast, it won't like it. You'll have to pull it out and reinsert it. So during this process, during this process here, the calibration process, um, it roughly takes around three minutes to calibrate so that's why it's really important if you're doing an arterial draw to get through this process first and ideally have this next to your patient um, that you're drawing from so that you can go directly from your uh, syringe into the cartridge once it's done calibrating. So don't draw until you pass the calibration process when you're doing an arterial stick. Um, once it's done calibrating, at that point you've got seven minutes to run your sample. If you don't, if you, let's say you're even doing a venous sample and you, you're in the lab and you walk away because of the calibration, someone calls you away, you've got seven minutes to run your sample. If you don't run your sample within that seven minutes, your cartridge is not going to be any good. So you're essentially going to be wasting um, money and you're going to have to repeat the process and, and time, so on and so forth. So please don't walk away. Um, be very aware if you are, if you do get pulled away, that, that you can't be gone for that long. You've got seven minutes to run that sample. So um, we'll go ahead and enter our information. So if we look at the top here, uh, I see I have beakers. I basically call that my sample page, but next to it there's a piece of paper. I call that my info tab. So I'm going to go ahead and touch that brings me to a new screen. Cursor's flashing in the patient ID box. I'm going to bring my keyboard up again. So in that patient ID box is going to be where I enter that DR number through EasyVet. So 28934 is the ID. I don't need to enter anything in ID 2, but I do need to enter the sample type. So I've, you see if you've got a couple choices. You've got dog, arterial or venous, cat arterial or venous, horse arterial or venous, or other. So uh, this is a dog, dog, venous, 
and which is typically always going to be the one that you're using um, unless of course you're doing that arterial arterial drill. So those are the two pieces of information you need, your sample type and your patient ID. Once you enter that, you can go back to your beaker stem. So you see it's almost done with that calibration process. So over here where your cards are kept, you'll also find some 1cc syringes. Let me just do a little invert here. I'm going to uncap that. I'm going to grab a little Kim White just for any mess I create. So normally I say always try to get, try to draw like 0 0.3 up in your syringe. And primarily that's just because if you, <clears throat> for some reason, your sample doesn't go through, you have a backup. Typically it takes roughly about 0.15 to run a sample. So you want to make sure you fully full get all of the uh, air bubbles out of your syringe, make sure your blood is all the way to the hub of your syringe, so no air bubbles, blood's all the way to the tip. Wipe off any excess from around the edges with that Kim wipe. We're done with calibration, it's telling me I can go ahead and inject my sample, so I'm going to take my syringe, I'm going to push it down into that little hole and just give a quarter turn, alright, that's just to kind of create a seal as you're plunging down so it doesn't squirt all over the place. So then I'm going to do a nice, good push and as I'm pushing I want to uh, look for look and listen for two things I want to see this little light by the teardrop or blood drop flash but I also want to listen for a beep so once I've seen that and heard that beep I can stop pushing and you don't want to go super slow because you can underfill and you don't want to go super fast because you can overfill so just a nice steady push Okay, so I heard the beep, I saw the flash. At that point, it's fairly fast. About a minute. And then once our results are up, we're gonna go ahead and transfer them to the computer. This analyzer communicates via Bluetooth so it uses a, another piece of equipment short of the EasyVet as well, which I'll show you in just a second here. 